Do you want to grab attention in your videos? What if you could point to exactly what matters and do it in style? But arrows are for far more than just pointing. They guide the eye, provide clarity, and make your videos pop. And now with Spark Arrow, you can do it with ease, precision, and style. Okay, let's do a quick test. I'll show you exactly how effective they can be. Check out this thing behind me. Does anybody know what it is? Okay, now let's try using an arrow. Check out this thing behind me. Does anybody know what it is? And to take it up a level, let's add some sound. Check out this thing behind me. Does anybody know what it is? That's so much better. Visual cues make it a lot easier for you to communicate with your viewers. And just for fun, if you do know what that is, uh, leave a comment below. Let's see if you can figure it out. Arrows are your secret weapon. They point viewers to exactly what you want them to look at. The Spark Arrow Pack includes three amazing plugins with unlimited styles and built-in presets. There's Spark Arrow, which lets you customize the colors, shape, presets, border, and more. And to take it to the next level, we have Spark Arrow Path, which lets you animate the arrow along a curved path. And finally, there's Spark Arrow Highlight, which lets you easily highlight the area where the arrow is pointing. The Spark Arrow Pack is a paid plugin and includes all three effects. But even if you're not interested in the Arrow Pack, Spark Effects has a lot of other free effects and workflow enhancements that can help you edit faster and better in DaVinci Resolve. Go to sparkeffectstudio.com, download it now, and start checking out all the different features we have to offer. To install the Spark Arrow plugin, start Spark Effects, click the Plugins menu, and find the Spark Arrow Pack plugin. Click it, and you can either purchase or install it from here. For a very limited time, the Spark Arrow Pack is going to be on sale, and as a special bonus, we're going to include the uh, Spark Color Labs plugin, which lets you customize colors and play around with some different color schemes inside of Resolve. And also, stick around to the end of this video to learn how to unlock all the SparkFX features and effects and help support this project. In this video, we're going to do a really quick walkthrough of the Spark Arrow Pack. I'm going to show you how to use all the features and options, customize it, and use the presets. Okay, let's take a really quick look at how to use the uh, Spark Arrow Pack. I'm going to walk through everything, and then we're going to show you how to use some of those expressions. I think you're really going to like it. Um, to get started, um, what you're going to, after you've installed the effects, you can go to um, Resolve, click the Effects tab, then open up Toolbox, open up Generators, and click on Spark Effects. And so here we have our three effects. There's a, the, the arrow, the path arrow, as well as the highlight effect. To uh, add the effect, all you need to do is take it. We're going to start with the spark arrow, and we're going to just drag it right into the timeline and drag it out for as long as you want it to be on the screen. It'll animate in, and then at the very end, it'll animate out. So let's go to the inspector. You can open it up right here. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to move the arrow. So you can move the arrow with the transform option. You can set the size and adjust the angle, and it's going to an automatically animate in at that angle. To move it a little bit easier, you can click this Fusion option here in this drop-down menu, select Fusion Overlay, and with this you can actually grab it and move it around. And you can grab this little wheel and spin it. So if you want it to point at a specific thing, you just drag it right over there, and it's going to automatically point in at that. Animation is pretty simple. There's an animation time in, time out, and then there's a distance in and a distance out. So this is in a second, so it's going to animate in, in and out over half a second. The distance in is the distance it travels as it's going in. So you see, if you want it to be a longer distance, you just bring that up to one and it's going to travel a long way. If you want it to be a shorter way, you just bring this distance down. Maybe you just want it to kind of come in really quick. Like the arrow section. So we have a blend and then there's a border width, which is the border of the arrow. So we can kind of bring that up a bit. You can adjust the border. We can adjust the color or even set it to be a gradient. So the, uh, the color options down here, and then the last section down here it <clears throat> is for the border, and that's this little black border that's inside of it. So you can change the color of that and do all kinds of options as well. That's the basic arrow customizing the colors. Now what if we wanted, now what if we wanted to adjust the shape? We're going to click on the Shape tab, and this is where we have all the customizations in there. So we can make it a bigger, smaller. You can adjust the arrow point. You can make it wider. Adjust the tail, the base like that, and even do an indent there. These few settings let you create just about any shape. And we're going to go through some presets so you can see all of the different kind of things we can do with this. It's really simple, and this was done with the expressions. So if you guys do want a video about this and want to learn exactly what I'm doing here, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll give you the magic behind it all. Now let's go into the preset options. So this is where it gets really powerful because this one control can look like just about anything. To get into the presets, all you need to do is click Preset. And you'll see that we have some built-in presets here. And let's say we wanted to save this arrow that we made right here as a preset. We can adjust the size, um, angle, get it set up exactly the way we want. And we'll go ahead and turn on the motion blur. So if you click, click uh, Animate or anim and then click Motion Blur, you're going to get a little motion blur with your arrow. So let's save this as a preset because we want to reuse it. So all you need to do is click the Set Manage Presets button. And that's going to open up this preset window. And these are all the presets that we have. You can choose any of them. And there's more than just show up for these buttons. But let's say we want to save this one. So we're going to hit Save as Preset. And we're going to call this Purple Arrow. And all we have to do is hit Create Preset. 
So it's going to create the preset. If you want to take a look at them, you can click this icon here and you're going to be able to see what all of the different arrow options are. So let's say we wanted to use this yellow arrow here. All we got to do is click it and that's going to update the arrow for us. Now, if we wanted to go back to the one we just saved, you'll see that we have this new button here called purple arrow. To go back to it, you just click it and that's going to reset and restore all the settings for that arrow. So that's how the Spark presets work. Let's take a look at a few of the other presets and then we'll move on to the other arrows. We also have some animated arrows, and this is when I'm going to show you how to use the expressions to animate a lot of this stuff. So let's click Set Manage Presets, and we'll click this black and white stripe one. And th this is done with a color offset. We'll show you how to do that in just a second, so you can use any color or style that you want. Let's add the path arrow. So this one works almost the same. So let's go up to the Effects, Generator Spark Effects, and take the arrow path and put it in here, and we'll drag it out. Let's take a look at what we got. Okay, so we got a basic arrow there. Now to adjust the path, all you need to do is click this fusion button here. So click this little drop down, make sure that fusion overlay is selected. You can grab these points and move them around. Now be careful grabbing the point because sometimes it'll try to complete the circle, which will mess you up, which you don't want. We can drag it here and to have it curve, we grab the handle and we move it. Let's take this right here and grab these handles and move it. And now we have an arrow that goes on a curve. And the same, same thing works for the presets. We can click preset and we'll uh, choose, choose this red arrow preset and maybe make it a little bit smaller. Take that off. And now you'll notice that some of these presets, they don't go as far as because the, the distance in is not far enough. So click this, go to the inspector, and on this animate section, you see distance in, we'll move that all the way up to one. So that means it's gonna go along the full path. And if we want to make it a little more complex, you hit this, and all you're gonna need to do is click on this um, path somewhere and you can add more points to it. I would kind of go a little bit crazy here. Be careful clicking around, make sure that you click exactly where you want. Otherwise, it's going to do it a little bit different. And then we'll bump up the time. We'll make it uh, three seconds. Okay, so now let's do the highlights. Say we want it to kind of highlight, not only go to a spot, but highlight the spot where it was clicked. We'll move this up, and we're going to take this spark arrow highlight and bring it down and kind of drag it out to match the length of that clip. And you'll see it kind of shows up right over here. It's not really where we want it. So what you can do is you can click on the highlight, click this button here, and we can actually move it around and drag it to where we want. Now, what if I've added a synchronization option that makes this a little bit easier because what ends up happening is we got right there. So that's where we want it to be. Drag this X and put it right on that dot. And you'll see it's going a little bit sooner. So we could, you could adjust this and kind of move it, move it around, move the timing around a little bit. Or another option I did was you can click Spark Arrow Path and then down in the Animate section, click Animation Sync and then go to Spark Arrow Highlight and at the bottom hit Arrow Sync. And that is actually going to sync it up, sync up the timing so that the highlight starts when the arrow ends. All right, that's the Spark Arrow Pack. You got the uh, you got the arrow, the arrow path, and the highlight effects. Some some great stuff to point viewers in the right direction. Expressions are a great tool to animate just about anything without having to use keyframes. And as I mentioned, anything that's a number, all of these properties that can be animated using a really simple expression. So for these expressions, we're just going to take a look at three things. There's the time variable, sign, which is a trig function, and ABS, which is absolute value. With these three things, you can do a whole lot. Time is a number that changes throughout your animation based on the frame. So as the animation is playing, the time changes. And that's key because we can use this to drive animations. Sign is a trig function, and it goes from negative one to one as the value you give it changes. If we want this to move a bit slower, all we need to do is divide the time and make the time a little bit smaller. So let's say divide it by 10. And you can see we're going from negative one to one, but a lot slower. And the same goes if you want to make the animation faster, you can just multiply the time by a number two, three, four, or whatever. And in this case, it's probably going too fast, but I think you get the idea. Okay, so if we want to control the range, all we need to do is take that negative one to one number and multiply it by something. So let's say we want this animation to go from negative 50 to 50. So all you have to do is take that equation and multiply it by 50. Okay, so let's say we only want it to go from zero to 50. Maybe we don't want negative numbers. We're gonna throw a, the ABS function, which is for absolute value. And what that does is it basically keeps the number positive. If it goes negative, it's gonna turn it back to positive. Okay, we have a new fresh air. We're gonna customize it and animate it with some expressions and save it off as a preset so we can reuse it whenever we want. Um, first thing we're gonna do is add a gradient. So um, let's hit the spark arrow down here, go to the inspector, and we'll close up the transform and animate and go to the arrow section. So let's set it to be a gradient and you'll see that it's gonna go from kind of a dark to white. You can see there, this is black to white. Okay, there we put a gradient on the arrow. If we want to adjust it, you can use the start and end points down here. And that's gonna set the starting and ending point of your gradient. Click the fusion button. And you can drag, drag the start and ending points around to create different angles for your gradient. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is uncheck the uh, fusion overlay 
is we're going to just animate it. So you can see we have this offset here. We're going to click repeat and that's going to have the uh, gradient repeat. So as we change the offset, you'll see that the gradient just keeps repeating. And you get this line here and that's because of uh, the change between the pink and the blue. To fix that, you just hit ping pong and it's going to go back and forth. To animate this, this is the easiest one. We're going to just right click on offset, choose expression and enter time. It's going way too fast, so to slow it down, all we got to do is divide time. Let's divide it by 10. And there we go. We have an animated gradient arrow to change the direction. We're going to just say negative 10. The, uh, you can also create other looks by, let's say, take the, uh, the blue and pink points and drag them together, and then take the, uh, the gradient length and bring it together with the starting and ending points. And you're going to have a, and you can have an arrow like this with some bars that are moving really easy to do. Okay. So what if you want to create like a pulse kind of a thing? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the arrow and adjust the border width. And we're going to have the border width kind of come up and down. So right here you see it's zero. And then we want it to kind of come up to maybe uh, like 0.03 and go back down. So let's right click on that and say expression. And all we're going to do is sign of the time divided by 10 to slow it down. And this is going to go from one to negative one. Let's take the fusion overlay off and you see that that's way too big. So all we need to do is multiply this by something to adjust it to make it either bigger or smaller. And we want the maximum to be 0.03. So we're going to say multiply times 0.03. And that means that this value is now going to go from negative 0.03 to positive 0.03. Now you see these are the negative values where the border actually goes in and it makes the arrow smaller, which we don't want this. And that's where ABS comes in. So go to this one and in front of it to ABS, all of this stuff, and that's absolute value. So it's going to take any negative number and turn it positive. And there we, now we have a positive number. It's going to go from zero to 0.3 and just cycle back and forth. Now let's say we want to animate the shape. And this is where we're going to add some expressions in here, click shape. And maybe we want the tip of the arrow to kind of grow like this. And actually let's uh, click on this and we'll see how big we want it to get. So that's zero. And maybe we want it to get to uh, point, uh, point oh 0.08. So we're going to right click on this expression. I'm going to knock that out and we're going to go sine of time divided by five times 0 0.08. That's going to have the tip of the tip of the arrow go from zero to 0 0.08. And this one is actually going to negative. So it's going a little further in than we want. So let's do the same thing. We're just going to put ABS in front of it like that. And it's going to go from zero to 0 0.08. Okay, and just for fun, I'm going to throw some um, expressions with the same kind of formula, just mix up the numbers on all the settings, and let's see what we get. Okay, and here's our crazy animated arrow. It's kind of interesting. Just using some expressions, we're, we made an animation. Okay, are you ready to take your DaVinci Resolve videos to the next level with the power of Spark Arrow? Don't wait and get started today. Go to sparkfxstudio.com, download SparkFX, click plugins, and get started with the Spark Arrow. And also don't forget to check out all the other plugins and amazing tools and workflow optimizations that are built in to help you edit better and faster. To purchase the Spark Arrow pack, um, download SparkFX, click the plugins area, find the arrow, click it, and then choose purchase. And this is just the beginning. We have a lot of amazing, really, really cool new, new tools coming. I'm really excited about, and hopefully we'll be showing you those to you very, very soon. You're not going to want to miss it. There's some seriously incredible new features coming. If you're really loving SparkFX, you love all the features, products, workflow enhancements, and everything in there, consider the Spark One subscription. This is an all access pass that unlocks all the features, plugins, and options. The subscription is not required, but if you want to have access to all the features as well as the new products we're working on, that's where the subscription is a great option. Not only does it unlock all the features, but it gets you priority support, gets you first in line in the queue for um, feature requests. You also get early access to new features, and it's a great way to help support our development. We really appreciate everyone's support, and um, we're excited to see where this project goes. There's a lot of great things coming up, and I'll talk to you guys soon.